At $135, my buyer's brain is telling me that this figure is way overpriced. But if that is the case, then why am I so glad that I did buy it? Yeah, this is everything it comes with. Just a figure, an extra head, four extra hands, and a small mount. So yeah, this is very minimal in terms of a $135 figure, especially when you look at it compared to the previous Storm Collectibles Golden Axe figures with mounts. And in a bit, I'll explain exactly why I am still happy that I went through with the purchase. And here's a real quick spin around of the box. Nothing to write home about. Pretty standard Storm Collectibles stuff here. And right here is one of a couple reasons, I'll share a few more later, as to why I am actually glad I went through with this purchase and I do not regret it one bit. If this figure had been less, it would definitely be in contention for figure of the year, but it being $135, I don't think it's going to be able to compete with other figures in that price range, so it's just not going to make it for me. And getting in for a nice close-up, I love this head sculpt, and I do think head-on, my lighting makes it look a little cross-eyed, but that's really just my lighting because if you look like from this angle, you can tell that it's not. I love this head sculpt and I love the alternate head that it comes with, which we'll get to in a little bit. I'll also kind of explain another reason why I'm glad I went through with the purchase. But he's got this tunic and underneath that tunic is a full body. I mean, he's got just shorts, right? But you know, you could swap out, put some like custom cloth goods on him if you wanted to take this off. In fact, I have swapped it out before, but um, I don't think I'll do it in this video because it's a lot of work getting it back on. So if you do it, just be aware it can be a bit of a hassle, but it's doable. Very similar arms and muscle structure as the Axe Battler, but definitely shorter arms, shorter limbs to make him a dwarf. And then one difference is that these wrist guards are actually removable and the Axe Battler has sculpted forearms over there and the belt is also a separate piece again the tunic is kind of a pain to remove but it's doable and um, the results can be quite good and then we can take a look at his boots down here and his feet are kind of big I kind of feel like that has a dwarfish look to it all of his proportions feel very nicely dwarven and let's take a look at him next to a few other figures and here are his select screen mates. On the left, we have the Axe Battler. On the right, we have Tyrus Flare. Next, barely fitting into the frame, we have Death Adder on the right and Tyrus's mount on the left. Here he is with his own mount, the chicken leg, and two skeletons. Bringing in some other lines, a couple of figures I think scale well with him. On the left is the Axie Toys Dino Warrior. On the right is the Masterverse Beast Man. Next, a couple Mythic Legions kit bashes. On the left is a standard sized 1.0 kit bashed figure. And on the right is a dwarf that has a couple parts mixed. And then it's got a Kylab soft goods set. Here's the Super 7 movie He-Man figures. And finally, here's how it compares to a couple of Mezco 112 collective figures. And here's the primary reason why I think that the 135 is overpriced. And that is the mount, the chicken leg. It does not feel like the same as one of those dragons and it's the same price as one of those dragons so that's my biggest gripe and i'm not saying i think this thing is particularly bad like there's not much they could have done with it really but it's just overpriced like maybe this set should have been 120 maybe it should have been 100 or something rather than 135 the same exact price as tyrus and her mount there's really no articulation anywhere in the body and the saddle is not removable, or at least I don't really want to because it's like pegged, possibly glued in the top. And even if I do remove it, there's going to be a hole up there. These fins are soft and they move around a little bit, but there's no articulation. The one point of articulation is there's a ball joint in the tail here, and there's really not much movement there. And then there's a uh, bendy wire that's pretty sturdy in the tail and a few points of articulation in the legs, but they don't have a lot of functional use because I don't really know how many other poses I can do aside from having him like angled down like this. And I'm not saying I dislike this thing. I'm just saying it feels overpriced for what it is. And then here's a look at him riding on the chicken leg and you know, there's no stirrups, there's no reins or anything. He's huge compared to it, which is kind of laughable. I guess that's accurate to the game. But yeah, there he is riding the chicken leg. 
The Dragon has more articulation, more paint, it has a removable saddle, it just feels much more premium. It feels more like an action figure than an accessory, and the chicken leg does feel like an accessory. And speaking of accessories, he does come with this alternate head sculpt with an angry expression, so that is fantastic right there. He comes with a pair of gesturing hands, he comes with a pair of gripping hands, and finally he comes with this awesome axe with some great battle damage on there. Very simple, but nicely done, nice and sharp and crisp looking. For articulation, his neck is on a ball joint. He's got a double bell up there. And this is a weird figure. You can see his torso moving when I move his head. There's a lot of moving parts underneath the soft torso. It's almost like a little skeletal kind of thing, but it does allow for a decent range of motion in that head sculpt. And even the beard is nice and soft, so that can kind of get out of the way and he can cock his head side to side and get into a lot of nice poses. I love the articulation on these for like big chunky figures. These things move well. He's got butterfly joints in the shoulders. His arm can swing all the way around. There's a bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows, though they can't really go past 90 degrees anyway. And then at the wrist you have the split ball, so you can get any range of motion you need over there. Some good crunch in the torso with that soft torso and the skeletal structure. And you can swing backwards quite a bit. You can angle side to side and twist as well. Legs can kick forward a decent amount. You will see some gap underneath there. So that's one of the things about these figures that can get gappy sometimes. There's a twist at the upper thigh, double jointed knee, but still only 90 degrees there. There's no boot cut up here. You can pivot his ankles and then you can thrust them up and down. And then there is toe articulation as well. And so overall, I'm very happy with the articulation on these Storm Collectibles figures and Gilius does not disappoint. And so final thoughts, I do think this figure is excellent. It captures that spirit and character of Golden Axe really well. I do think it's overpriced. 135 is quite a bit when you compare it to the other figures in the line. But I am glad I bought it, not just because I love the figure, but also because it's readily available for less than 135. 135 is the retail, but right now you can find multiple places selling this for 120 bucks. So if you're hunting around, make sure you check because you can find this figure for 120 shipped. And until next time, may the force be with you.